hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime symbol and today i'm going to be giving you part four of what if naruto was neglected with chaos magic remember to get this one too 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice i indeed have three more channels which i post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy i already post a brand new episode over an anime king of what if naruto was gilgamesh reincarnation so go ahead check out that and enjoy guys the link for the other channels will all be down in the description so yeah without further ado or wasting any more time how about we jump right into this brand new episode shall we let us begin now guys starts the intro So, to do a bit of a recap for the last part that we left off, Zabuza found himself facing off against the very embodiment of chaos. Unaware of that, as both him and Ruta stood there, a battle then took place between the two. However, Zabuza underestimated Ruta greatly. Kakashi was the only one that was able to witness this, because the others were still by. Tazuna sighed. As they started the battle, Naruto proceeded to summon a strange serpent that wrapped around Zabuza's throat. His process of trying to remove it got his head torn off as Haku had intervened trying to help but Haku watches his master died right in front of his eyes. It scarred him. Yes, it truly scarred him badly as Naruto started whispering in his ears. He started to manipulate his thoughts, entering his mind. Little by little, Naruto broke Haku's spirit, making Haku do the unthinkable and ending himself right there and then. Even Kakashi was freaked out as he felt his very skin crawl, yes. His skin was crawling after witnessing what Naruto had done. As Naruto took Zabuza's blade, they headed towards the village. Naruto was the most nicest person there, as he was cooperative, talkative, he was so great. Kakashi wondered if he was bipolar in that moment. If another personality takes over, he truly wondered if that was the case. Given Naruto's switching personality and it was so instant, out of nowhere. However, the problem wasn't done yet. While the other two were training, Surprisingly, Naruto already knew the tree walking technique. Yes, he knew it rather well. While the other two were training, Kakashi made Naruto accompany him towards the bridge. Upon the boat of them getting there, they found themselves attacked. As Gato had brought all of his men, he tried to make a deal with the Kanoha ninjas for them to leave, as his quarrel was not with them. So he wanted them to leave immediately, but... They refused to do so. Naruto told Kakashi to let him handle it. That is when Naruto proceeded to rip space itself. As he seemed to summon creatures from beyond this world, their hands came through the very definition of space. Gato man was taken as they were crushed. The scene was a very disturbing and gory scene as Naruto bathed in their blood. It was chaos all over, the water turned red. All the fishes that were nearby died. The plants and trees started to lose their color as Naruto was basking and enjoying himself in all of the chaos. Kakashi was truly and utterly disturbed. Throughout all of his years, he has never seen anything like this before. And once it was done, Naruto's personality switched back to that kind, 
calm, loving individual, which scared Kakashi even more to how quickly he could just flip his switch like that. This boy was truly unnatural. The people there saw Naruto as a hero because, to them, he saved them from the tyrant that has been coming after them for years now. He saved their life and he protected them, so they saw him as a blessed hero. Returning to the village, as the other two were not aware of what had happened, Kakashi had sat down with Minato and speak to him on the matter, as Naruto had headed home to find his mother nearby there. He spoke to her so casually, despite the fact that they've not been in contact for some time now. Koshina started to feel remorse as Naruto told her about his achievement in saving the people. As it started to break her down slightly, she started to feel remorse for abandoning him as she wanted to extend the hand but she was just afraid. Locking up in his cell as Naruto went to sleep, he was awoken by his father who demanded some answers. As Naruto gave him a vague explanation of what had happened, majority of what he told him was a lie but Minato could not tell if Naruto was lying or not. That was how good he was. Just like that, Team 7 was making quite the name for themselves and so was Naruto as well. One person in particular did not like this. It was Menma as he hated this. He hated the fact that people were now seeing Naruto as a ninja or as a hero. He despised the thought of that. When the time finally came for the big event, the tuning exams, as people were coming from all over to witness, the event take place in Kanoha. As Naruto and his team were signed up for said exams, Team 7 members weren't really getting along, not at all. They weren't bonding or were they coming together. As Naruto went into the room to see his brother and his sister, as there was a little hassle there as they pulled weapons on him. However, Naruto was just his usual self, playing it off like it was absolutely nothing. As they did the test and headed towards the forest, Orochimaru of the Sanin was here. Orochimaru intended on quickly finding Anne, getting Sasuke. He just wanted to speak to the boy. Minato was a big obstacle that he could not deal with right now. So he needed to speak to the boy, he needed to do so. Upon doing that, he would be able to get some information, which he could use, as he wanted to twist the boy to his side slowly. However, Naruto had disengaged from his team, telling them that he would be right back, as he went straight after Orochimaru. Yes, he went straight after him. As the both of them caught up, Naruto already knew who was under there, as he told him that he needed him. However, he did not need him alive. His mission, his purpose, was to die for him right here and now. The Sanin scoff at Naruto remark, refusing to bow down or fall to a simple child, as the both of them launch himself at one another. So yeah guys, basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place, check for yourself, so say we jump right into this brand new episode. Let us begin now guys. We begin this episode with Orochimaru of the Sanin as he stood over the mangle and destroyed corpse of Naruto. In his hand was a Kuznagi blade soaked in blood. The Sanin had to say this child was stronger than he thought. Not to mention his strange abilities caught him off guard at first. However, he was still that a child. And he was Orochimaru of the Sanin. As Orochimaru looked down towards a boy who was no longer breathing. Given what he knew about this boy and how he was treated, what he did was a mercy killing. However, still, Minato would try to use this to come after him. He cursed as he has been here for too long. As he wasn't going to be able to interact with Sasuke, he had to leave the forest. He would simply allow his people to nab him while the invasion was going on. He looked down once again and scoffed at the child claiming that he was going to take his life. With that, Orochimaru headed off, making his way. Time skip. A team was making their way through the forest. Given their head bang, you could see that they were originated from 
the land of rain. As they moved through the foliage, they weren't Kanoha Ninja, they weren't used to the tree hopping thing. As they made their way through the foliage, they were coming up with a plan. They had a perfect technique that they could use together in order to get them a scroll. However, they all came to a stop when they saw someone pinned against a tree with a spear going through his stomach. What the hell? One of them said as he was shocked by this gruesome scene as they haven't come across anything like this since being in the forest so yes it was quite a gruesome sight to see who the hell did this the next one to him said the girl of the team she hated the scene that was in front of them let's just move on as she started to realize how truly dangerous this thing was will be fine a boy with a scar on his face as he seemed to take the leadership role as long as we stick together we'll be all right they took their eyes off the corpse just for a second you know sometimes sticking together isn't the right thing to do the boy eyes widen as his two friends the girl and the other rain ninja both froze they quickly jumped away but their so-called leader was unable to move. The boy that was holding him was none other than Naruto, who was perfectly fine. Naruto's hand was set on both sides of his face as he could not move an inch. How? How the hell are you? Alive? You know, if you were really good ninjas, you would have taken a closer look to make sure everything was on the up and up. But I guess you're just kids pretending what do you want the girl said oh that's simple i want your scroll which one if you have it they looked at one another the girl immediately shouted i do she said as she reached in her pouch no the leader said don't give it to he was unable to finish that sentence Ruta jerked his hand successfully snapping the guy's neck oh would you look at that I guess my hand slipped, said Naruto. His other friend did not take it lightly. He ran at Naruto with a kunai, straight forward, without any concern as he jumped. The guy that Naruto killed was a close friend of his. However, Naruto simply smiled as he stood there. The guy slammed into him, and the kunai seemed to pierce his heart. The both of them dropped to the ground as he pushed the kunai further. Die, 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 he yelled in frustration and rage. Naruto spat out blood as he lay there dead on the ground. The girl walked over. Did you? He's dead all right. He said as he looked towards his friend. But, however, what happened next shot the two of them? Their own friend rise up off the ground. His eyes were white and lifeless. As he looked toward the two of them, Gajo, the girl said, You're, you're okay. However, he jumped, crashing into his own friend and tearing out his throat with his teeth. The girl screamed, but the next moment Naruto hand was safely secured around her neck. Surprise, aren't you, said Naruto. She tried to move but he nicked her under her chin as her whole body froze up. She could not move an inch. Why don't the both of us just watch? As the chaos unfolded, tears started to leak from her eyes as she was screaming until Naruto placed a hand over her mouth. As he wiped his finger across her mouth, her eyes moved frantically as stitches started to sew her mouth together. Locking it tight. Now why don't you be quiet, said Naruto. And let's just watch. She was forced to watch as her teammate ripped apart another with his teeth and hands, devouring his flesh, devouring his organs. However, that wasn't the most messed up part. The guy on the ground that was being eaten, he wasn't dying. Yet the pain was excruciating. And the zombie that was devouring his flesh and organs. He was fully aware of what he was doing but he couldn't stop. In the real world, 
Naruto stood over the three, three ninjas who were on the ground. As his hand was moving in front of their face, as a red aura was linked to their heads, Naruto had just trapped them all in their own mind. It wasn't something they could break out of. They weren't strong enough. However, what he desired was something much more. He stripped each and every one of them out of their clothing. As he placed them all together, lying them on the ground, he bit his finger before he started to draw a pentagram on each of their heads. Naruto then stepped forward before raising his hands. Both of his hands were then covered in a red aura as he slammed them together. He started to speak in a tongue that wasn't from the elemental nation. Slowly but surely, their essence were being drawn directly out of them. With their mind in a constant state of panic and fear, they couldn't fight it. Their bodies started to lose their vitality, their strength. As their skin started to wrinkle, they started to age 10 years in seconds. As they aged more and more, by the time Naruto was done, the only thing that remained was husk and their clothing. As Naruto looked up in the sky and smiled, feeling an amazing feeling coursed through him, there was a much more darker side of chaos. Chaos magic was nothing to scoff at. As Naruto had just scratched the surface and he was going in deeper and deeper. Naruto made his way as he picked up the scroll and headed off. He already accomplished what he desired to accomplish within the forest. Meanwhile, Sakura and Sasuke, they found themselves not knowing what to do. As Sakura was worried that the two of them wouldn't be able to handle a three-man team, However, Sasuke had full faith in himself that he could take on anything that was thrown at him. However, boo, Sakura jumped and screamed. Instead of ready to fight, she screamed as Naruto started to laugh his ass off. You bastard, she yelled at him. You scared me. That was the intention, said Naruto. As she started to glare, as he flipped out the scroll and caught it, I believe this is what we desired. Sasuke turned as he gave Naruto a hateful look. It was his default look for Naruto. How did you? Some things are better yet kept to myself, said Naruto. Now, I think it's time that we get the hell out of here. Don't you guys think? Once again back in his cheery and friendly mood. As the group proceeded to left the forest of death, they were actually the third team to arrive. The first team that got there was a team from the San. The second was Menma, Mito, and Ami. And the third was Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. Which left many rather surprised by that. As Naruto saw his siblings, brother, sister, he said, greeting them with a happy smile. I guess we all are going through rather splendidly. Time skip. Naruto was seated on the roof. He shouldn't even be up here, but he was. As he was sitting there, his eyes closed. As he seemed to be meditating, his legs folded. However, someone came out. A smile came on his face, even before he opened his eyes. It's a wonderful day, isn't it, sis, he said. Standing there was Mito. As Naruto got to his feet, what the hell is your problem, she said. I am not sure when greeting one another became so rather violent, but I'll go with it, he said. I don't have a problem. Yes, you do. You think we're going to fall for this act? What are you talking about? Cut the crap, Naruto, she yelled. I was there. I was there on that day. I remember exactly what happened. I remember everything. I know everything. I heard people talking about it. What you been through when we were not there either. I am confused, Naruto said. What started this all? Menma was the one that first attacked you. However, when I tried to stop him, you got so angry. You attacked the both of us and you almost killed us. Your own brother and sister. 
after that, after the word had been leaked, everyone started to see you as a problem. We could have no longer protect you from the allegation of you being cursed. So many people died around you, the villagers. Some of them even, they attacked you, abused and beated you. I heard things and none of us were there to help you or even did anything about it. So why? Why what? Why are you acting so nice? Like everything is just gone. Why are you acting like everything is alright? I know that you hate us. So stop trying to act like you care about us. Stop acting like you give a damn. Stop being so friendly. I'm confused. Do you want me to hate you? Said Naruto. It would be better that way, she said to him. You're fully in your right to do so. Because if you don't hate us, we can't make up for what happened. Despite everything that you did, despite everything that we did, we just can't never get along ever again. It's too... It's too painful, she said. Looking away, the next moment Naruto was in front of her. She was surprised as she tried to step back, however, he simply smiled. Well, you're wrong about one thing. I don't hate you. You, you don't? But what? You're lying, she said, as she stepped away from him. Well, I guess I just... I'm different, he said. I've done some horrible things. You guys have done some horrible things. Let's call it even. No. What? said Naruto. I said no. You're lying. You hate us deep down, but you're trying to move past it, but it's not something that you can ever move past. You mean it's not something you can move past? You know, I always knew that you were the intellectual one. Between all of us, you're a smart girl. Think of it as you must. It doesn't really bother me anymore, he said, as he patted her on the shoulder. Besides, you'll always be my sister. As he made his way and left the roof, Mito had no idea why she came up here, what she was trying to prove. But she meant every word of what she said. Every single time when she saw him lately, he was being so friendly, being so nice. She overheard her mother and father talking about him and her mother was saying so many good things. That he was different, that he had changed. That they could be a whole family once again. However, her father was against it. He was against it. Saying that Naruto was lying. Even if he was not lying to them, he was lying to himself. And he was a problem. She didn't know what to do anymore. As much as she was angry that he had tried to kill them. They had watched things happen and they didn't bat an eye. But still, she just didn't know what to do. Time skip. The days flew by rather quickly as all of the Jennings were gathered. However, the most shocked person in the room was the Sound Jonin. He was the leader of the Sound team. The man was mortified as his gaze looked towards Naruto, Namikaze. That person was none other than Orochimaru. In perfect disguise, to not be sense or be able to be picked up on. But the Sanin couldn't understand. He himself had gutted the boy and ended his life. However, here the child stood. The child was standing right there alive. This, this made no sense. Orochimaru couldn't understand what was going on. And how was this even possible? He had killed a child. The Hokage stepped forward as he started to speak. Minato was talking about the unification of the nations as a Chonin exam was helping them to not to go to war. His gaze swept over the crowd as he found Naruto standing there as calm as ever. There was a lot of team that made it. Majority of them were Kanoha teams though. He hand the reins over towards Hayate. Hayate spoke as he asked any one of them if they would like to give up after the gruesome forest event that they've been through. Kabuto Yakushi raised his hand, saying that he was still injured as he proceeded to leave. 
With that, the exam proceeded forward. Sasuke Uchiha was first. As they made their way up towards the podium, Naruto turned as Kakashi was standing behind him. I guess you're pretty proud of us, Sensei, he said. Well, I'm glad that all my genins made it this far, said Kakashi. Well, we do have a wonderful teacher to guide us, Naruto said with a smile. As he turned his gaze for a brief moment, his gaze locked with a sound ninja. The sound leader. As Naruto smiled at him, Orochimaru wondered if the child knew that was impossible. Not even the greatest sensors would have been able to pick up on what he has done. The child was just friendly. But the child that he fought in the forest was... No. Was there two of him? Orochimaru questioned his sanity in that moment. He couldn't understand or explain how this was even possible. The fight down below ended with Sasuke victorious, as Orochimaru was looking forward to taking over his form, the splendid form of the Uchiha. Matches after matches took place, as everyone was showing their skills. That is when Naruto name was called. As he stepped down there, his opponent was Zaku from the sound. Before he made his way off, Orochimaru whispered to him to kill the boy. To not hold back in the slightest. Not knowing why but following orders Zaku made his way down there. Face to face with Naruto, Zaku cracked his neck looking rather cocky as he did not believe that Naruto could stand a chance against him. Hayate told him to begin. Zaku held his hand out and released a double barrage. The attack was violent and fast however. Naruto outpasted it. Well, that's pretty good. But do you really want to do this? Are you an idiot? Zaku said, of course. After all, I am going to be the one that win this match. So there isn't much that you can do or say to stop that. Oh really now, said Naruto. Look into my eyes. And tell me if you believe that you're going to win. Is this some sort of trick or game? Look kid, there is not... Zaku was suddenly cut off the moment he met Naruto's eyes. Zaku stood there as both him and Naruto were just looking at one another. Everyone was confused given how quickly the match started out. Zaku and Naruto looked towards one another as they kept on staring at one another. Menma folded his arms. He wanted Naruto to lose, to be kicked out. He wanted for people to see that he was a disgrace to Namikaze name, that he wasn't strong, that he wasn't anything special. However, Zaku started to tremble, uncontrollably tremble. He quickly reached into his pouch as he pulled out a kunai and stabbed it directly through his throat. Everyone was mortified and shocked as he pulled the weapon. Ending himself right there and then. He collapsed down bleeding gruesomely. All the kids were shocked as they couldn't believe what they just witnessed. Except for a select few. Gara being one of them. As Naruto stood there as nonchalant as ever. Whoa. I guess he had some mental problems Naruto said out loud. Minato gave the signal as Zaku was quickly taken away. Naruto was declared the winner. But many were confused as they didn't understand. What the hell just happened? Why? Did he do that to himself? Kakashi was fully aware of what just happened. However, the last time it happened, Naruto had been manipulating the person by speaking to them. This time though, he barely spoke. Menma was confused. What the hell was that? He thought to himself. Not understanding. His name was next though. As he faced off against Kiba Inuzaka. Kiba stood no chance against Menma as Menma wiped the floor with him. It didn't matter how strong Kiba was, Menma was better. The next match was Mito. She made her way down there as she faced off against Kin from the sound. This match ended within the span of 50 seconds. As Kin tried to use her needles against Mito however, Mito had a secret weapon. A long range secret weapon from her mother's side. She extended chains out of her stomach. K 
Kane was taken out in seconds. The rest of the matches took place. As Naruto's match was still a mystery that no one could understand. More and more Orochimaru was confused, not quite understand what the hell was going on. He killed that child and now the child was here and make one of his own kill himself. Orochimaru couldn't understand just what the hell, what the hell incarnation was going on. When the exam finally came to an end, all of them were told to draw numbers. And they all did. As Naruto got number 4, his opponent for the finals was Gar. A rather psychotic match. Sasuke who made it through. His opponent for the finals was actually Menma. Finally, they can truly decide and say which one was the strongest between the two friends? Mito would be facing off against Temari. Naruto did not take stocks of the others, as none of the others truly interest him. Making his way over towards Kakashi, Hey Sensei, he said, given that me and both Sasuke pass, and you and him share the same trait, as Naruto pointed toward his eye, would you mind if I do some solo training? I would have to advise against that Naruto. The opponent that you're going to face is a very dangerous one. I wouldn't want oh I'll be fine said Naruto. Besides, my training is something that you can't help me with. Nor can any other Jonins. So, while you focus on Sasuke would you mind that I do some solo training Naruto repeat himself. As he looked at Kakashi, he was just staring at him. Kakashi relented and told him to be careful facing off against his opponent. However, Kakashi knew that, as strong as that boy was, he stood no chance against Naruto. His unpredictability, same like when he faced someone stronger than him, and that was Zabuza and he still defeated him because of the things that he could do. Even till this day, they had no idea the full range of Naruto abilities. Naruto made his way directly towards Menma. I guess you and your buddy are going to fight. I wonder which one of you will win. Menma turned as he faced Naruto. It doesn't matter, but there's one thing I sure know about. You're not going to pass your tests. Nor are you going to pull a fast one and pass and win the whole exam. Because I'll be there to stop you. I thought you said it didn't matter, said Naruto. Men must step forward as he glared at Naruto. Everyone might think that you're different, that you're changed, or that you're something special now, but I see through you. I know what you really are. I can see what you are. Oh? And what is that? A monster, said Menma. Well then, if that's the case, shouldn't you be careful speaking to a monster like that? There isn't a problem when... I can kill the monster, Menma said. Whoa, big talk. Since when have you gotten so brave and so courageous? Naruto said with a smile. Well, I guess all I can say is, I'll see you in the finals. Have some fun, brother. Naruto said walking by Menma, as Menma glared at him. Time skip. Minato had agreed on Naruto training on his own. Because he wanted to see the secret behind his training. However, for the past week, all his envoys were able to discover was the child doing absolutely nothing. Yes, you heard that correct. He was doing absolutely nothing. He walked around. He sat down. He spoke to himself. He spoke to others. All he did was simply walked around. There was absolutely no training. For the past week straight. However, it wasn't only the Anvus that were watching him. Kabuto Yakushi was watching Naruto. Sent here by his master to investigate how the boy was alive. Orochimaru was sure that he had put an end to Naruto but he found himself seeing the child. Which made absolutely no sense. It shouldn't be possible he was supposed to be dead. The Sanin did not understand how was he alive. Time after time again, it kept on racking his brain. 
He watched the boy heart stop. He watched a life fade away from him. There was no way the child could use a genjutsu on him. That was powerful enough to mess with his mind. Aruchamar didn't understand as Kabuto returned back to report to him, telling him that the boy was doing absolutely nothing. As Minato was getting frustrated by this as well. As he had no idea how Naruto's strength was growing, how he already knew the tree walking and water walking. As a part of him realized that, perhaps Naruto was the prodigy out of the three. As Menma and Mito did not pick up on things that easily. And the way things are set right now, given the unpredictability of his abilities and how fast and strong he was, perhaps Naruto was also stronger than them. Something Minato did not like when it concerned the other two, as he was concerned about their safety. However, they were not the only ones that were watching Naruto. As Jiraiya of the Sanin was looking down towards the kid, Naruto was in training ground 52, simply sitting down on a log. As Jiraiya had found him, he was here to help regarding Menman Mito's training. Considering that the both of them were in the finals, they had to move certain things around as they might end up fighting one another. However, ever so often when he's here, he's always checking up on Naruto. Jiraiya did not trust him one bit. He remembered the prophecy from the Toad a long time ago about the dark eye youth bathing darkness. Just look at him. Both Menma and Mito possessed features of their appearance while Naruto had dark hair and dark eyes. Nothing to show that he was anything like either of them. He didn't look like them. He didn't possess any traits of either of them. Jure did not trust him one bit as he had brought it up to the other two to make them knew what their son was and he believed in the toad prophecy without a shred of doubt because even before that Naruto was already showing signs that he wasn't a good child. He had psychopathic tendencies, especially when he went after Menma and Mito, and even after his own mother with a knife. So Jure did not trust him one bit, despite what Minato had told him, as it seemed like he has made a great change. From a long time now he has been cursed, there has been so many that died around him, and now he was able to control that curse. Something that he said that he doesn't really know about. Jure did not trust anything that come out of his mouth as he stood there watching him. He turned his gaze as he heard something. However, it was just a rabbit moving down below. Gazing back upwards, Jure found himself shocked as Naruto was no longer seated on the post. Jure felt a chill run up his spine. Years of instincts kicking in as he spun around. To see Naruto sitting on the same branch that he was currently occupying. As Naruto smiled at him. Of all people to be watching me. I never expected you to be one of them. I wonder. Given your relationship with my brother and sister. Does that also make you my godfather? Said Naruto. Jiraiya had yet to speak. As Naruto simply smiled at him. You know. I heard about this so-called prophecy, the one with the dark eyes. I overheard my parents talking about it a very long time ago. I was always curious, but I never got to speak to you on the matter. Why did you think that it was me? Naruto said stepping closer to the Sanin. Jiraiya, finally speaking as he stood up, as he was rather taller than Naruto. Jiraiya wasn't about to hold anything back. His instincts were always spot on. I don't trust you, said Jiraiya. And what could I have ever done to make you not trust me, said Naruto. Jiraiya looked at him. I was there on that day. When that building came tumbling down. All those kids. And they perish. I saw the look on your face. Instead of feeling remorse, upset, you smiled. You were the only one that walked out of that tragedy and countless children died and you simply smiled like it was a wonderful day. I stopped trusting you on that day, said Jiraiya, and your actions have proved that my instincts were spot on. 
what you try to do to your brother and sister and your mother. So that is why I don't trust you. The Sani said standing firm on what he believe. Well, it's a good thing that you're not in charge. Because as we are now, your opinion does really matter in these things, no does it? Listen to me and listen to me good, said Jaraya. If you ever, in any way try to hurt the family, I will be there. To take the burden of doing what? They can't. Oh. To be threatened by a Sanin. Truly terrifying, said Naruto. Well, I guess we won't have a problem then. Because I have no instinct or thought to hurt any of them. They're my family after all. And as much as you might not see it, I do love them, said Naruto. So go ahead and hate me. I guess it's just something I'll have to live with. Besides, it's not like you're the first one. And you won't be the last. Well then, I guess I'll see you at the Chunin exams. With that, Naruto made his way off. Leaving the Sanin alone. Time skip. Everyone was getting prepared for the upcoming exams. As everyone had been training and getting ready. Pushing themselves to the limit and breaking past expectations. Well, except for Naruto. However, he was not the main focus point. It was Orochimaru. Orochimaru had something big plotting for the upcoming exams and yet he was being driven crazy. Orochimar could not get over what happened in the forest. He watched a child die right in front of him. He watched a child took his final breath. However, here he was alive and kicking. The Sanin couldn't understand it and it was driving him crazy. Was the boy immortal? Could he possibly not die? The Sanin was plagued with numerous questions that he had no answer to and he had no idea how to solve them. It was too risky entering Kanoha right now until the time was right. Once he successfully take the village down, that is when he will find out every single secret and detail of that boy. After all, it was clear that he wasn't a normal child. When the day finally came, the place was packed. Because of the popularity of Minato and the village as a whole, there was countless, multiple people that were dabbling in wealth, here to bet on the exams and here to show their support for the future tunings. So the exam was about to begin. As Minato held his hand out and shook hands with the Kazikage, greeting him, the long-standing relationship between Kanoha and the San has held up strong through the years. As there was many more down below, daimyos, dignitaries, all of them were here to watch. The first match of the day was actually his daughter versus the Kazakage daughter. The Kazakage spoke. I don't see your other son down there. Yes, he seemed to be running a bit late. Minato said gritting his teeth in silence as Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Quickly giving a signal to one of his people to go and find where Naruto was. He was the only one that wasn't here. Even Kakashi was on time with Sasuke. However, they decided to go ahead with the matches. Given that, Naruto match wasn't until a few slots down. Both Mito and Tamari were the only ones left in the rings as the others made their way up to the viewing boot as the proctor stepped within the center. He looked towards the both of them and asked them if they were ready. Given the go-ahead, the match began. Tamari immediately get a long distance away from the girl, as Mito did not move though. Tamari pulled her fan to the first moon. I'm gonna end this in one shot, she said. Try your best, Mito said, sounding a bit cocky. When Tamari sent a massive gust towards her, Mito simply stood there waiting for something. The groan in front of her erupted. Yes, it erupted. A large piece of earth came up. The wind attack clashed right in it. Now normally the earth would be blown back, however, it was sturdy. 
Once the attack died down, the piece of earth was launched. Timari was able to easily move out of the way though, dodging the attack. As she had no idea what just happened because her view was blocked. Mito was still standing there rather confident as everyone was watching the match with great interest. Those who were behind Mito was able to witness what just happened as Kushina was seated along with few of the other mothers. Yoshino Nara was one of them. Kushina gaze looked around though as she wondered where Naruto was. In the lineup she did not see him as she wondered why was that. She knew that Minato would not let Naruto stray anywhere. So he was in the village. Then why wasn't he here she thought to herself. Since becoming a ninja, Naruto has proven himself to be nothing but nice. Always doing the right thing. However, upon talking with her husband Minato, showed her that it was all a act. Well that is how he put it. It was Kakashi who spoke to him on the regards of Naruto. Yes, it was Kakashi. What happened at Land of Wave? The demonic presence that he felt. At the moment she was just confused. Because even Kakashi was confused. One moment he was death itself, the next he was nice. Harmless. His personality. There seemed to be two of them. Making Kakashi wonder once again if he was bipolar. She decided not to focus on that right now. She was here to cheer her daughter on as she looked down. As the match down below increased, with Temari opening the fan once again to the second moon. This time, the win was more ferocious. However, Mito used her clones to throw her out of the way as she was suspended in mid-air. But this was all a trick. Temari noticed the clones that were gathered. There were five of them. When the real Mito landed on the ground, Tamar realized that she was boxed in. Before she could even say a word, the ground erupted and this time, golden chains snapped out of it. The chains that were coming from the clones back and the real Mito back as well. Tamari jumped and twist and dodge, trying to evade as best as she could but they were so fast. One of them grabbed her hand and threw her. Tamar realized where she was being thrown. As Mito summoned a clone that gave her a boost as she rushed forward, going through hand sign. Temari gripped the side of her fan and lashed out as Mito slammed the hand in her gut and ducked under the fan. A concentrated blast of wind energy. Temari was launched. She slammed into the wall with a great amount of force. As she landed on her feet, she had enough. Temari proceeded. To open her fan fully but that wasn't all she summoned a weasel with sickles when she released her most powerful attack it was dosed with slicing blades and with the sickle moving like a gig mito had to run but it wasn't something that she could outrun looking towards the ground she did something fast as a violent attack tore through the entire place Ripping everything to sunders. Everyone held their breath as Mito was in the dead center. She wouldn't be walking that off without any major damage. As Tamari was taking some deep breaths. It wasn't easy as she was using a large amount of chakra not to mention. Swinging the large fan around. However, when the smoke and dust clear, all that could be seen was the top of a dome. As Mito had... Lower the earth by her chain breaking through it and hunk her down and covered herself with layers upon layers upon layers of chains. Some of them were broken and sliced, however, it held up. Tamar curse. She had to do it again, however, she looked down. Mito burst out of the earth and delivered a brutal uppercut before grabbing her by the arm. She then slammed a brutal punch in her stomach. She spun on the ball of her heel before delivering a brutal kick to Temari's chin. Jumping above her, she created two clones. They bombarded her in mid-ear. 
as Mito came down and dropped her. Timor hit the ground with a great amount of force as Mito stood there above her. Give up, she said, as a chain started to flood back to her back. The range on them was extremely long as she had used them to dig on their ground and place the others as a place marker to make Tamari believe that she was still there. Tamari had no choice as she couldn't fight in the condition that she was in without Mito putting her down. As the match was given to Mito, the Kazakage seemed to be rather genuine as he was saying good wishes towards Mito despite his daughter loss. The next match was something that the both of them had wanted for some time now. To finally settle it, which one of them was the stronger between the two? As Sasuke Uchiha and Menma Namikaze made their way down. Where is he? Menma said. I have no idea, Sasuke said, having no interest in Ruta whereabouts. I guess he finally realized that he was nothing but a shame and embarrassment to our name and decided not to show up. He's not important. What is, is that I finally show you that, out of the two of us, I am the stronger one. Sasuke said with an arrogant smirk. It seems you still have not wake up from that dream that you're still in. Because what you're saying will never be a reality. After a few minutes, as both of them stood in front of each other, everyone was looking forward to this match. To see the prized son of Minato, given that the other one was not praised as highly, and the last Uchiha within the village threw down as the both of them square off. As the match was given the go ahead, you would think that they weren't friends, with how fast and violent they were fighting, just to see which one of them was the better. At first, it seems like they were equal within power, however, Menma was faster than Sasuke, but Sasuke possessed much more skills and that was really showing as he was outpacing Menmine hand to hand. When it came to the ninjutsu section, as they were able to cancel out each other techniques, the both of them were fighting rather violently for two supposedly friends as they finally want to put this argument to arrest. As the time started to drip by, they start to exhaust themselves, growing tired. However, Menma was pulling out on top. He had much more stamina and Sasuke could not keep up. In the end, Sasuke collapsed down to the ground as he overused his Sharingan. Menma's speed was a counter for that. While Sasuke's eyes were fast, Menma's body was faster than his. As Sasuke collapsed on the ground. However, Menma did not come out of it scot free. You could see the damage that he took, but in the end, he came out on top. The entire audience exploded in cheers. As Menma's name was rising to new heights once again. However, many people were just comparing him to his father, something that he did not like. As they say, he got that speed from his father. His intellect from his father, everything about his father, his father this, his father that. As the time went by, Kankro did not want to participate within his match, as many people boo and threw things. However, Minato noticed that and found it rather odd why he chose not to fight. But it didn't matter though, the next match was Gar. Minato got word from the Anvu that they were unable to find Ruto. A moment of panic set in as Minato realized that Ruto was nowhere to be found. His usual guards that were always watching him, they said that they lost him. Knowing that he couldn't afford to get angry right now, Minato calmed himself. As the match was called, Gara made his way down there. He did not seem pleased because his opponent was nowhere to be seen as Gara was getting more and more angry that he wouldn't have any fun. As the announcer was about to say something until, they all felt it. It felt like all the sound had vanished. Everyone 
could hear their own heart beat. And it was rather unnerving. Minato snapped his gaze down below. When he saw a shadow start a pool. Yes, shadows mingling and twisting together. When suddenly a hand rose up out of it. Rising to his feet was none other than Naruto. His black hair swaying in the wind. His bangs coming down covering his left eye. He was wearing a sleeveless black shirt that opened at the front. A white t-shirt underneath. Black pants and sandals on his feet. Having no weapon on him, not even a pouch where he would store his kunais. There is no reason to lose your crap. I'm here, said Naruto. Even the proctor was a bit freaked out. Just by standing close to Naruto, they could feel an odd sensation. As Naruto smiled. I suppose it's time that we begin. As many whispers could be heard in the crowd. Minato released a breath that he was holding as he thought that Naruto had tried to run away while all of this was going on, but he was wrong. Here he was. Orochimaru, clad in the Kazutage disguise, once again had no possible thought on how the child was still breathing. He watched as he draw his final breath, but it was something that he could not explain. As he stood there watching the scene in front of him, given what happened during the preliminaries, he couldn't afford for Gara to die. He was one of the main driving point of what was going to take place. The attack on the village, courtesy of the One Tails. He needed the beast to rush through the village. There was too many unknown about this child. Orochimaru decided to call it. Quickly sending a signal over towards the nearest envoy who was none other than Kabuto Yakuji. Orochimaru gave the signal, which proceeded to Kabuto giving the signal to another. Before the match could even fully begin, Kabuto activated his technique as feathers start to rain down. But not only that, explosions went off. Immediately, Minato got to his feet when purple smoke filled the entire box. Minato held his breath as kunais were thrown his way. However, his guard landed and deflected all of them. Not that Minato wouldn't be able to. Minato jumped away as two others rushed to his guards. He landed outside when the Kazakagi landed outside as well and knew something was off. Minato said with a scowl on his face, Is this really what you want to do? After all these years of partnership, do you really want to sever all ties with one silly and stupid mistake? The Kazakagi started to chuckle before reaching up as he ripped off the veil. Surprising Minato who had no idea who was under said veil. Orochimaru smile, tearing off the disguise that was clouding his vision. As he chuckled lightly, well it doesn't matter what I'm ruining, he said. Minato gaze snapped her own as he saw. All the four ninjas performing sequence of hand signs. He was about to end them but Orochimaru shot snakes towards him. Minato sliced them to ribbons in seconds. However, the barrier was thrown up. Minato looked around. It seems you haven't learned from your mistakes. But this time, things are different. I will not allow you to leave this village with your life intact. Obstructing this barrier. Do you really believe that this can hold me? said Minato. Oh, I know you can escape. However... I don't think you're going to want to run away. Orochimaru said as he slammed his hand down. More snakes shot towards Minato. That is when he went through hand sign and summoned three coffins. Unfortunately though, the third one failed. Something was not right with it. Orochimaru frowned but the other two seemed to be doing just quite fine. He smiled as he stepped within the center. Minato eyes widened. I'm sure you see the predicament now. You can't choose to run but, once you do, I will set them loose on Kanoha. And then, 
you will truly see the error of your ways. You really fall in far, further than I can ever imagine. To think that you were once a prized student of yours in Saratobi and one of the legendary signings. I'm sure he's looking at you now with nothing but disgrace. You think that dead old kook, opinion, is anything that I care about? Aruchumar said with a chuckle. It doesn't matter the ploy that you hatch. It doesn't matter what you've done. You will never be able to break the will of fire. And I will see to that. Aruchumar opened his mouth. However, the next moment, something crawled out of his shadow. The Sanin was confused. Minato himself was rather shocked. Standing beside Aruchumar was Naruto. That's better, he said. With a smile on his face. Oh, it seems I'm interrupting. Orochimaru lashed out with the intention to end the boy's life. However, before he could touch or harm Naruto, his body froze. The Sanin was confused. What? Why can't I move? He said not understanding what was going on. How are you here? said Minato. As he looked towards Naruto. Well, that's a really long story, father. And I suppose you're wondering why you can't move as well, said Naruto, chuckling at his own joke, seeing that Urchmar already asked that. Well, it's quite simple. Naruto said with a smile. Minato heard screams, terrifying screams rippling through the village. As Naruto started to laugh, now it all begins, he said. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see the next portion, do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.